In this video, I will first provide a brief introduction into the Conventional Gate Model 2, or CGM2, and how its implementation into Nexus 2 has slightly changed in 2.9. I will then discuss the different options available when setting up your pipelines for processing. I will finish with a walkthrough on how to fully process both a calibration and dynamic trial for one of the models. In an earlier video, we had introduced the background to CGM2 and how you could set up your Python environment to run these models in Nexus 2.7 or 2.8. A link to this video is available below in the description. In Nexus 2.9, the implementation of the CGM2 models has been made easier as they are now native to Nexus. This means that a separate installer is not necessary and users will not need to worry about correctly setting up their Python environment. Users can simply install Nexus 2.9 from the website and will have access to all CGM2 models. Please remember, these models were written in Python by Dr. Fabian LeBeouf from Salford University. Information on these models, as well as support, can be found at pycgm2.github.io. Within Nexus 2.9, users will notice that all CGM2 labeling templates, or VSTs, have been set to default templates, and that all of the custom pipelines running Python operations have been replaced by CGM2 operations available under data processing. These three new operations are CGM2 calibration, which we would use for all static calibration trials, CGM2 functional calibration, which should be used for the knee calibration model, and CGM2 fitting, which will be used in all dynamic trials. Just as a general note about these pipelines, you'll see that CGM2 calibration and CGM2 fitting both have their properties and sections. This allows a user to pick settings that apply specifically for the model they are using. As an example, if a user is using CGM 2.1, they can choose from settings belonging to CGM 1.0 plus and CGM 2.1 plus. Making changes to the settings within CGM 2.2 plus will have no effect. As each operation has its own set of properties, I will run through these individually. In CGM2 calibration, there are four sections within its properties. The first section lets you specify which model you wish to use by using the drop-down menu next to Model Version. For those with experience processing using the plug and gate model, the next section, 1.0 Plus, will look familiar with properties such as marker diameter and the ability to designate whether the feet or head are flat during the static trial. These are joined by a couple more parameters. The suffix field allows a user to append characters to the model outputs. This is especially useful if you are comparing the model outputs of multiple models which have the same output name. The reset MP property allows a user to clear optional parameters such as interaces distance and recompute. In the next section, for CGM 2.1 Plus, there are only two properties, whether to force the left hip joint center or the right hip joint center. If you recall, CGM21 uses a different hip joint center calculation than CGM1. Thus, these properties allow a user to override the hip joint center calculated by CGM2 and specify their own hip joint center, whether that be the one used within CGM1 or using some other functional method such as score. In the last section, CGM2.2+, a user can designate whether to disable inverse kinematics. Disabling this property will use direct pose estimation to calculate segment orientations instead of the IK model. CGM2 functional calibration should only be used when running the CGM 2.6, which is the knee calibration model. The first property lets you select whether you would like to use the 2 degree of freedom or the SARA method for calibrating the knee axis. References for both of these methods are shown below. The next property allows you to set which of the sides you would like to process. If, it's, if it is set to auto, the algorithms will detect the side based off of the ankle marker movement. The last two properties allow you to specify the range over which you would like to run the functional calibration. CGM2 fitting pipeline will be used for all dynamic trials. Similar to CGM2, you can specify which model you want to use. Specify the marker diameter, and add a suffix to your model outputs. You can also disable the IK model for all CGM2 models that are 2 and above. The one unique property here is the projection. This allows you to specify which reference system you want to use when calculating joint moments. Your choices are proximal, distal, global, or the joint coordinate system. 
Now let's walk through an example. Here I'm going to process trials from the skin clusters model, which is the third model listed on the CGM2 GitHub page. I'll check that I have the correct VST chosen here, which should be pi cgm2 dash lower limb underscore cgm23, and I have entered in all of the required anthropometric measurements. I will reconstruct, and then I will just run the auto label static from the pipeline. I will check my labels really quickly. before running the last two operations within this pipeline. When time to run the model, I'll create a new pipeline. I'll add in CGM2 calibration. I'll specify the correct model, CGM23. And I'll keep the parameters as they are, but I'll add in a suffix so that it will appear as underscore PY. I'll go ahead and run the pipeline. And just keep in mind that this may take some time. When complete, you can see that I have calculated model outputs and that all the model outputs appear with the underscore PY. If I want to go ahead and run the plug -in gate static now just for comparison purposes, I can do so and you can see that I'll have model outputs for both. I'm going to go ahead and save the trial and then process the dynamic trial. In the dynamic trial, I've already reconstructed, labeled, cropped, and gap filled to eliminate all gaps as shown here in the data quality tab. I've already selected CGM2 fitting and will specify the model below. So that would be CGM23. Similar to the calibration trial, I will add in a suffix underscore PY. And then I will go ahead and run the model. When finished, I will run the plug and gate dynamic pipeline so that I can compare model outputs as well as generate events for normalization. I can then verify that my model outputs have been calculated and actually plot them against each other. Thank you for watching this video. As always, if you have any questions about your software or hardware, please do not hesitate to contact us at support at vicon.com or visit one of the resources shown below.